Welcome to Music Student 101. If you've heard episodes 50 and 69 on modulating to closely related keys, you're ready to check out this episode. After these discussions, you'll be ready to move to just about any key from any distance. You're listening to Music Student 101. Here are your hosts, Jeremy Burns and Matthew Scott Phillips. And we're back. And we are back. We are back. Um, we, uh, we had a fun episode before that, Listener Compositions. Yes, indeed. We listened to some of our fine composer listeners. Indeed, yes. And that was fun. Yeah. But now it's time to get back to the grind. Indeed it is. Back to the theory. <laughs> and we are diving in head first here. Let me tell you something. <laughs> On that episode, speaking of which, um, our pa- the Patreon patron that we thanked was our friend Cody M. Gibson. Right. Cody, actually, like a good Patreon patron, has written to us and asked a question uh-huh. <clears throat> involving something interesting that one of his... Uh, one of his favorite musicians does. Mm-hmm, indeed. Jonathan Colton has a song called Still Alive. Yes. And we were able to, in the on the Patreon page... Yeah, on the Patreon page... Break it down for him. Yeah, and it, it, was, was, it was a fun time. It was a fun time. And now another interesting thing about this was um, what Jonathan Colton was doing was he was starting off a song in the key of A major, mm-hmm. which is three sharps. Right. For the chorus, he ended up... Magically in C major. Yeah. Zero sharps or flats. Yeah, so, so, he, so three accidentals away. I think that classifies as a distantly related key. I think it probably does. Yes. And yeah. uh, just interestingly enough, if you want to hear that process, check us out on patreon.com. Yep. Definitely. Slash music student 101. Yeah. Uh, is it $5 will get you access to? Well, $1 will get you access to the page, so you can see all the content, all the extra episodes, and all that stuff. Awesome. $3 will get you all that, plus a coffee mug, a music student 101 coffee mug. And these coffee mugs are pretty badass. They are pretty badass. And uh, and then the $5 donation will get you, ask any question, we'll make a 15-minute Right, yeah. So you can hear Cody's question for $1. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For $3... You can hear Cody's question and get, not Cody, anyone's, yes, Cody. anyone's question, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can hear anyone's question. For $3, you get that in a coffee mug. You can and enjoy. And then for $5, you can ask us a question yourself. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. So anyways, um, just a, kind of a cool thing. Yeah. Because we're going to be talking about that today. Yes. Modulation Excellent. to distantly related keys. Yeah, and this gets complicated. Mm-hmm. Um... I would definitely suggest that before you listen to this, uh, you listen to number one, our our discussion of modulation to closely related keys. Yes. Yeah. Which is, uh, which we'll recap briefly, but definitely important. And also number two, I would listen to our discussion on, did we call it chromatic harmonies? Mm. Where we talked about the German augmented six chord and the Italian augmented six chord and the Neapolitan six. That was just an episode called augmented six chords. Okay, plus yeah. six chords. Yeah, so definitely listen to augmented six chords. Uh, definitely listen to our uh, earlier discussion on chromatic harmonies like the Neapolitan six. Yes, we had an entire episode on the Neapolitan six chord. Yeah, yeah. So those uh, those things that are chromatic alterations, chords that are not diatonic to the key you're in, that we're pulling in other notes to create these chords. Uh, definitely listen to those in the run-up to this, because uh, you'll want to have a pretty good grasp on that before you start stretching your brain to uh, this stuff. Yes, there's a reason that we covered the German augmented six chord, or the augmented six chords and the Neapolitan chord yes. before we got into modulation to distant. And the borrowed keys. chords, too. And the borrowed chords, yeah. yeah. So there's a whole lot of stuff we had to cover before we get to this point. Yeah, but before we get into that... Before we get into that, we have a new review. We have a new review. Matt, would you like to read this one? I would. So our review comes from uh, Ricky Poodles or Poodles. <laughs> P o o t l e s. <clears throat> I'm going to say uh, yeah. I'm going to say Poodles, but I'm sure I'll get corrected if I'm wrong. Let's let's try that out. Yeah. So uh, from Great Britain, no less. Yeah. Uh, from across the pond here. So our uh, our review from Ricky says. If you've struggled to advance your musical knowledge with dry textbooks, Mm. and haven't we all? We have. uh, This podcast is for you. 
Jeremy and Matt take a structured, engaging approach to music theory from the bottom up, allowing you to make progress quicker than you ever thought you could, whatever instrument you play. Hey. That's awesome. Thank you so much for the kind words, Ricky. We do endeavor to try. Having having waded through more than one dry music theory textbook in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, we feel your pain, and that's why we're doing this. Yep. Now, moving on, we have a new Patreon patron. Lovely. Let me tell you about our friend Nathan Michael. Okay. Nathan Michael is from Frederick, Maryland. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, I recently discovered your podcast and have been thoroughly enjoying it. I took piano lessons as a child and a number of music theory courses in college, but my music career, which was always just a hobby, is something I allowed to wane over the past 10 years. Hmm. Hmm. I have been pushing myself to get back into creating music. Mm -hmm. I bought myself a nice Moog. A copy of Ableton, and thankfully, my mind is full of ideas. Oh, we love to hear that. Ableton is like a um, just a tracking software. Right, yeah. It's, it's kind of like Pro Tools, but it's not quite as expensive mm -hmm. and maybe not as powerful. I don't know. Maybe easier to get, get maybe, around. Huh? Maybe easier to get around, yeah. Um, I have, still have my Pro Tools problems. <laughs> Anyways, can, he continues. Moreover, it did not take long for the realization to strike that I needed more than just a few fancy tools. I knew I needed my theory skills to be back and better than ever <laughs> and that's where you fellows come in Yay! Hey, hey, hey. your podcast is something i'm listening to every day in conjunction with practicing my piano although i have a decent grasp of the basics of theory i feel i'm still treating this as if i have forgotten how to walk and need to learn to crawl again first <laughs> does that sound familiar oh absolutely thank you both for your efforts in bringing this wealth of information together for us students I might not be in school, but I'm still a student. Indeed. Yes, you are. Yes, we all are. We all are. My skills have gotten better after just a little bit of review, and I know they will continue to grow with more and more time and practice, which is very exciting to me, to say the least. Mm. Again, thank you both. Your podcast is fantastic. Nathan Michael, our Patreon patron. Uh, our patron. And thank you so much, Nathan. Uh, that is uh, it's so good to hear that we're having a, a positive impact, especially on you know these people who feel like they didn't want to go to school for music or couldn't go to school for music and, and music is a hobby it's a pastime mm -hmm. uh the uh the these are the people i think we impact most and it's really it's really uh it's really nice to see that yeah you know it, it's really it, it's really nice to see people who do music not because they have to for their living yeah but but because but because they want to right, right? and and you know, I feel like they should they should uh, have as much access to to the breadth of musical knowledge as anybody else. So I uh, concur, totally. Hey, another co cool thing about Nathan, while we're all kind of influencing our listeners, Nathan has influenced me. Oh yeah, because many times in my life, people have recommended the band King Crimson. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and how? I mean, this is one of those things, kind of like the the Highwaymen. When I was like, how did these guys? How are these guys around all this time? And I never <laughs> right. really gave them the time of you know. <laughs> I mean, King Crimson, I mean, Tony Levin, for one thing, the bass player. Oh, yeah. Peter Gabriel's bass player. Yeah, Amazing, amazing. Yeah, I can't believe you've never really listened to King Crimson, dude. Well, they, yeah, not, everybody in that band is a phenomenal musician. Not too long ago, my friend Jerry Chapman, who does the guitar, a lot of guitar for our music, he got me into Adrian Bellew, yep. know, the guitarist, uh -huh. and uh, he recommended the album Discipline, the same album that Nathan recommended. Yeah, so did you check it out? Yes, Nathan recommended the song Frame by Frame, and it was just awesome and crazy yep. and weird. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, my, yeah. <laughs> one of my favorites was Elephant Talk. Are you familiar with that song? Uh, it, it, it's coming back to me. Yeah, he's like yeah. using the alphabet. Right, yeah. For yeah, a bunch yeah. of crazy words. Yeah, okay. Balderdash, yeah. Ballyhoo, it's only talk. <laughs> you know I love my big words. <laughs> but uh, thank you for that recommendation, Nathan. Um, there's We had a few of our listeners recommend things that I've actually gone in to look into and really enjoyed it and was thankful for being exposed to that. So. I, I, I saw an interview with uh, John Petrucci huh. uh, this week. Yeah. Uh, and he who is the guitarist for Dream Theater mm. and, you know, considered, you know, just phenomenal and he certainly is. Uh, and, and the interviewer at one point asked him, uh, what's it like to wake up and think I am arguably the best guitar player in the world? Mm -hmm. yeah. And and John Petrucci had a very modest answer and said he doesn't think that, of course. And, <laughs> you know, um, but uh, when the interviewer asked that question, I thought, arguably the best, sure. Uh huh. Adrian Bellew, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's something. I mean, you know, uh, he, he's different, but, 
you know, in terms of, you know, his, his, uh, his argument for best guitar player in the world, I think he can make one. Mm hmm I just love their style. It's very quirky and very weird. You yeah. Know? And, and that's harder to do. It's hard to do. You know, it's he, hard to be quirky. Yeah. You know, could John Petrucci be quirky? Uh, <laughs> he's never tried, I don't think. Right. Know, it's, a, it's a serious band dream theater. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we digress. We digress. <laughs> what else? What else? We also have some listener mail. Ah. So this comes from Ryan Sadowski. And Ryan says, I love the podcast. I listen during my commute from work. None of my friends do music anymore and are annoyed with me for obsessing over it. <laughs> we kind of have the opposite problems. Yeah. Or I kind of have the opposite problem. Yeah. All of my friends obsess over music constantly, and I kind of wish they'd shut up. Uh, so, that's so funny. So you don't want to talk about books or movies or anything? I mean, come on. <laughs> I, just, I um, told, taught a whole class today. I'm sick of yeah, talking I'm about Yeah, <laughs> I've been teaching all day. Can we, like, talk about Game of Thrones or something? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, Ryan continues, so it's pretty helpful to me to just hear people talking about music. Don't stop rambling or digressing. Don't worry. That, oh. <laughs> that's unlikely to happen. We just did that, didn't we? We, did, we just did digress, and we're rambling now. So, More to come. You know, you're, you're safe on that. Uh, I do have a question for you guys. How would you go back and relearn music if you could? What resources would you use, and what areas would get more focus than others? Going to music school isn't really an option for me, but I'd like to have that knowledge. Mm. So I'm working on a DIY kind of solution built around your podcast, jazz guitar lessons, and apps for rhythmic and melodic dictation. I'm asking this question to learn if I have any gaps in my approach. Thank you so much, Ryan. That is a very good question. It's a very good, interesting question. It's one of those that, that I have to think about for a little bit. So me too. He's, he's basically asking, what would we do differently when we were learning music? Should I pause tape while we think about it? Should I? Uh, yeah. Let me try. Let me try. I'll start us off. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let's see. When I started off playing music, I was just I got I got a keyboard, mm -hmm. and I just kind of did a little peck and hunt 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 and peck kind yeah, of thing yeah, on the keys yeah. until I started creating melodies. Uh -huh. And of course, I got those little Mel Bay books that had Lavender Blue right. and Camp Town Races and all the right. simple folk melodies that we can learn. Yep. And I did actually learn uh, reading music a little bit through that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, um, of course, we didn't have the resources back then. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, too, you know, back then, all of these uh, ear training apps and, and things you know, weren't necessarily available to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if I had had those resources, I might have tried something like I'm doing now with Musician. You know, mm -hmm. it's just that app where you can learn how to play piano and actually it shows you proper fingering and proper mm. technique. Right. And you also get to use your ears a lot. And, yep, um, yeah. And there's many apps for ear training. Yeah. Um, maybe I would have taken it more seriously, but I don't know. You know, I'm pretty happy with what I've accomplished musically <laughs> yeah. because I didn't want to go much further than my BA, and, and I really wanted to perform more. It's hard to say. It's hard. Should you, would you have taken it more seriously? Should we have taken it more seriously? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was, pre it was pretty serious for us. Yeah, it was, actually, when I look <laughs> back at all the time we spent studying and yeah. banging yeah. our heads against the wall. <clears throat> <laughs> it didn't feel like we were taking it seriously. Maybe that's just because we were enjoying it. Well, and also, we went to school. We went, we went, the, we went all the way through college yeah. with that. You know, some of these listeners might not be talking about that. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe, and he asks also what areas would I, would you have focused on more than others? I would have probably, I always kind of wish I had sort of expanded my tactile reach more than I did. Oh, yeah? And this may be just a unique quirk to me, but I always feel like I wish I had not focused just on understanding, but also being able to do Mm. You know, I wish I would have learned to play more songs than I did. Mm. And I wish I would have um, learned to play more instruments than I did. Mm. You know, because I, I feel like I got very off into, number one, learning the theory, and number two, learning to use the theory to write my own stuff. Yeah. You know, and play in my band and get famous, right? Mm. <laughs> Which didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, and, that and, was my plan. Yeah, right. You got to have a plan B. Got to have a plan B. Uh, so um, I, I think I would, uh, I wish I would have done this. And my advice would be don't, don't get so caught up in technique that you forget to actually play. Mm. You know, and 
alternatively, don't get so caught up in playing that you forget to learn technique. Yeah. You know, my, my, my advice would be try to strike a balance between learning theoretical concepts and approaches, uh, practicing scales and chords and, and, and working on technique with actually learning music from the repertoire. Mm-hmm. As many genres as you, can, as you can absorb, as many instruments as you can absorb. You know, um, don't don't get narrow minded. I think as a teenager, I was narrow minded. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and uh, that is probably that was probably bad. Yeah. So. Hey, you know, another thing I kind of wish, looking back, how, how could I have done it differently? Why, how, what, you know, what would I have done differently? Yeah. Now I think about it, I didn't even know what an interval was until I got into college. Right. Yep. I wish I had known more about ear training. I wish I had been able to apply. Well, if I had yeah. known theory, I could have applied it to what I was learning. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, and... Ear training. Stay away from 99% of the, you know, learn guitar in a week kind yeah. of BS. Just, that's not going to happen. The, well, it's not going to help you. Yeah. It's, it's designed to, to make you feel like you're you're progressing very quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, the way... You know, the way a bag of Doritos is, made, is designed to make you feel like you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it... But it's it, yeah, you know, it's it's not really going to help you. You know, um, look for look for the theory stuff that has meat to it, and there is some out there. You know, mm-hmm. the guitar grimoire is still something I recommend to people. Yeah, uh, Adam Cadman. Uh, you know, look at look into that, and you know, look into look into the stuff that really kind of has some 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 meat to it. You know, and and don't be afraid of of complex theory. You could you know you'll understand. You, know, you can <laughs> read it a thousand times until you get it. It's fine. And if I was a kid and I had a podcast like Music Student 101... Definitely listen to that. <laughs> I'd be listening to that constantly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, shall we uh, Shall we get into this episode, Matt? Let's get into the meat of this episode. Because it is a meaty one. Uh, yes, because it is definitely a meaty one. One of my favorite old English words is kedge. K-E-D-G-E. Oh, yeah. That's to stuff oneself with meat. <laughs> So today, let us kedge. Let us kedge on some music theory. <laughs> some music theory. Because uh, uh. this is, yeah, this is this is the part where, you know, a lot of people have to start buckling down. This is the part where, for a lot of uh, college music students, you know, they kind of go from, okay, I mostly get this to, oh, wait, what? What did you say? What did I miss? What yeah, happened? Yeah, so. I turn my, te- I turn around, blink, yeah. and all of a sudden... So we'll try to we'll try to explain slowly, and we'll try to stay in relatively easy keys like C or G or something. I'm on board with that. Um, uh, know of course that this applies to all keys. Everything applies to all keys. It's just a matter of transposition. Well, so. even if we start off in a simple key, we're going to end up in a way less simple key. It's entirely possible. Kind of we'll see point, what happens. Isn't it? What we're talking about before we bury the lead any worse is is modulation to distantly related keys, mm-hmm. and we're going to largely do that in one of three ways. Ah. We are going to discuss uh, chromatic pivot chords, mm-hmm. uh, chords that are chromatic in at least one of the two keys we're talking about, the beginning one or the the, the finishing one. Episode 69, we already had a little bit of a preview on yep, that. Yep, yep, yep. Go back and check it out. Uh, in harmonic reinterpretation of an German augmented six chord, mm-hmm. which uh, definitely go back and review the episode called Augmented Six Chords if you need a refresher on that. You very well might. Yeah. And uh, inharmonic reinterpretation of the fully diminished seven chord, ah. which is a fun one. Yes, it is. Uh, which is a, a great front fun one. The world is your oyster with that one. Yes, indeed. So we in, in a previous episode. Episode 50. Episode 50, okay. In, in episode 50, we talked about modulating or changing the key of a song. So starting in one key and changing to a different one somewhere in your song. We talked about that. Uh, and we talked about changing to closely related keys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we defined that as a key that had uh, a difference of one accidental in the key signature, maybe two. Yeah. Right? So, for example, from <clears throat> uh, from D to A, you're going from two sharps to three sharps. Yeah. So that would be a closely related key. Sure. Right? Uh, from, from C to uh, A minor... Node change, so as that's, close as you can possibly get, right? That would can... be the relative minor. Yeah. Or from um, from F to B flat, you know, we're adding a single flat, you know, 
or from B flat to F, we're taking away a single flat. Mm -hmm. right? No more than one accidental key. And, that's, and so those are considered closely related keys. And they tend to be the ones and fives of each other. One to five is, is easy, very close. Mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be the relative majors and minors of each other, mm -hmm. or the ones and fours of each other, or whatever. Yeah. Right? And we also talked about some of the main ways to get to these closely related keys, yeah. specifically diatonic pivot chords, right. chords that were diatonic to both of those keys, right? So um, something that would be uh, a two chord in the first key might be a six in the second key mm. or vice versa, right? right. Minor two to, to uh, minor six, you know, to get to a minor key from a major. And, yeah, or, uh, so we, we, we talked about that. And there are also chromatic pivot chords, which may be diatonic to one key, but chromatic in another. Mm -hmm. You know, so like a um, a borrowed flat six reinterpreted as minor four or something, right? Like that. Um, or it could even be, you know, maybe neither. We'll probably talk about some of those today. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so. That's the main way, pivot chords. And we talked about tonicization, the gear shift thing, where it just immediately becomes a key, uh -huh. right? We talked about 505 as a pivot chord, just kind of becoming five. So rather than saying 505 to five, you're just in that key that was five. That's uh -huh. the thing that happens. Yeah. You know, um, so in this episode, we will talk about modulation to uh, distant keys. Mm -hmm. uh, and to get to... More distantly related keys, keys that are three accidentals away or further away, uh, you're gonna need chromaticism. You hey, know? question for you. Yes. Not to beat this dead horse, but I know that we've in the past said if it's got uh, at least two accidental difference, mm -hmm. is there kind of like a closely distantly related key thing going on there? With I mean, two accidentals away? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there's, sure, there's gray area. Yeah. Right? So uh, a, a key two accidentals away is not as closely related as a key that's only one, mm -hmm. sure, but it's not as far away as, you know, something that's a minor second away, C to C sharp. No sharps to seven sharps. Mm -hmm. Very, very distant, right? Yeah. You so need the three accidentals that. away is distant-ish. Yeah. You know, um, there's a whole theory uh, that we'll get into in some future podcast that kind of says, well, no, sometimes it really isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, this sort of redefines the idea of distance in, in terms of keys. But for our purposes here, we can call that distant-ish. Yeah. I think, you know, fa fairly dis distant. Fairly distantly related keys. <laughs> yeah. It requires a certain amount of creativity to get into, maybe not an, a, a great amount of creativity. Uh, but that's the thing. Getting to these distant related keys involves using chromaticism in kind of a creative way. Mm -hmm. you know, and hopefully by the end of this, we all understand that you can go from any key to any key. Yeah. The, qu the only question is, you know, how, how creative are you going to be in your way to get there? Mm -hmm. Right. And how convincing. And how convincingly you get there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's talk about chromatic pivot chords, shall we? Let's. So, so the first big way is a chromatic pivot chord modulation. Uh-huh. Basically, um, using a pivot chord, you know, and we originally defined pivot chord as diatonic to both keys. A chromatic pivot chord is going to be chromatic to at least one of those keys. Mm-hmm. Right? So... Uh, there are three basic types, and these are pretty easy to get your head around. Yeah. Uh, diatonic, chromatic, you know, diatonic in the first, chromatic in the second. Uh, chromatic, diatonic, chromatic in the first, diatonic in the second. So far, so good. And chromatic, chromatic, chromatic in just all around. Okay, now let's talk about this for just a quick second, mm -hmm. because I asked you about this earlier. Yes. And I said, if it's chromatic to both keys how is it a pivot chord how is it even a pivot chord how is it not just a weird floaty thing sitting around in the in the universe yeah, yeah. yeah. well chromatic doesn't especially at the stage we're in now chromatic doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't belong in the key mm -hmm. right uh when you hear a chromatic chord in the context of a key you know if you've been listening to a piece of music that's been in d major for you know ever and you hear a, a seven seven of two, mm. you know, you're going to hear that in the context of D major, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's not necessarily that it be it doesn't belong to the key. 
uh, you know, I could see a theorist making a, a you know an argument that you know these kind of chromatic chromatic chords are just floaty things, right? But the the whole thing about a pivot chord is to step away from your expectation. So you can hear seven seven of two in D major, expect it to resolve to two mm -hmm. because yeah, that's that makes sense, right? And instead, seven seven of two is reinterpreted as uh, seven seven of something else in some other key, and then resolves in a way you didn't expect. So in that sense, you were still pivoting. Mm -hmm. You're still using that that chord to step onto a different path, right? And you're able to do that because of the context that that being in a key gives us, gives our ears. Great. Okay. So the yeah. pivot chord does not need to be specifically diatonic. Does not need to be. Now, of course, the overwhelming majority of them are diatonic to at least one, if not both keys, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but especially when you're trying to get to far away keys, composers tend to get very, very creative. Okay. You know, this incidentally kind of, in, in classical music anyway, is the kind of stuff that eventually leads to the breakdown of tonality. You know, the, the sort of abandonment of the notion of key because it, it gets so confusing that it starts to get to the point where it's like, does it even matter what key we're in right mm -hmm. now? Right? Our ears can't even really keep up with all the steps away and back. And, you know, so it becomes, does it even matter? So, yeah. But, you know, little, little, little foreshadowing there. Can we hear an example of each kind? Yes, we can. Let's start with chromatic to diatonic. What you got? Uh, so if we're in, let's say, the key of D major, for example, and we're playing around in D major, um, or, oh, that was cool there. That was cool, yeah. Uh, and then we have a uh, uh, five, and then we go to a borrowed minor six chord. So let's reinterpret this flat six chord as four. Okay. And we're going to go uh, four, and then uh, five, one, hmm. and now we're in F. Hmm. And so we have gone from this D major, two sharps, two sharps all the way to uh, F, major f natural major one flat one flat three accidentals away yeah right so pretty distant ish right can i hear that one more time yeah whole thing just yeah yeah why not so uh um, got a d yeah i'll try to make a semi interesting chord progression here so one uh two six yeah and then uh five and then we're going to do something crazy, like a borrowed flat six, so B flat major. Mm -hmm. But then we're going to reinterpret that as four. And go five and wow. one. Very nice. And then we can just be an F for a little while. Yeah. And we could even do the same thing to go back. You know, go uh, one, uh, one, F and major. then four b flat b flat right okay. to reinterpret as flat six yeah yeah and maybe from flat six uh, move up to five six and ah. then we're back in d major yeah see how that works great chromatic to one key diatonic to another key and so that's a chromatic pivot chord mm -hmm. right but so uh, diatonic in the first key, uh, chromatic uh, in the second. Uh, let's be in F major. Okay. Nice, simple, just a single flat, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we can be in F, and then we can play uh, a two chord, and then that two chord can become a five chord, and then we can be in F. Yeah. So we're good in F. It's important to establish your key well. I feel F-E. And then uh, five, and then uh, and then we'll play uh, we'll play a good old uh, four chord uh -huh. in F. So we're uh, we're playing a B flat chord. Still feels F-y. Yep. Uh, but I am going to reinterpret this chord. Okay. I am going to reinterpret this chord as a borrowed flat six. Hmm. 
and a borrowed flat six B flat would be a borrowed flat six in the key of D major. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to treat it like I would treat a uh, flat six. So I'm going to resolve uh, to maybe five seven, and then hmm. D major. Wow. Yeah. So I've gone from F uh, one flat away to D two sharps away. Three, That's traversing three accidentals. Three accidentals. Right? Yeah. Taking away the flat and then adding two sharps. And in this case, it was chromatic. It was diatonic chromatic because the four of the F chord is still chromatic in the key of F. Yeah, B flat in F. Yeah, yeah. We're in, in the F. first key. Yep. And then nice diatonic major four chord. Uh-huh. I'm just going to call it flat six now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And I'm going to. Uh, So yeah, so now we're in D. Yeah. And that flag six is chromatic to the key of D because normally in the key of D major, the six would be B minor. Right, this yeah. This is a B flat. This is a borrowed chord in that key. Yeah. So it's a chromatic alteration. Diatonic chromatic. Yeah, diatonic to chromatic. Uh, so you can already see how you can sort of just use the same chord to go between D major and F. You know, uh, a minor third away. You, know, you could just go D uh, to... B and D major, use this chord to go to F, be an F for a while, use the same chord to go back to D major, right? Leave or be an F for a while, use this chord to go to D major, yeah. use the same chord to get back to F, and have a strong a song structure that is, you know, about these two keys, right? You leave a trail of breadcrumbs, you go you, back the way you came. Yes, absolutely. Again, subscribe to our to be, become a Patreon member, because uh, we talk about stuff like this. <laughs> hey, yes. I, I can handle those two. Yes. So far, so good. Yes. Okay, so this last one I'm a little worried about. Chromatic to chromatic. Yes. Yeah, so uh, chromatic in, uh, chromatic alteration in either key. Mm-hmm. And these will often involve uh, secondary dominance, like five of fives, mm. you know, or five of two becoming five of five, or seven of something becoming seven of something else. Uh-huh. So, for example, I'll be in good old D major. Good old D major, two sharps. Good, good old D major, yeah. And... I'm in D major, and I'll do something. Uh, I'll do something fun here. I'll go D major, and then I'll go uh, four, and then I will do. Let's say I'll do seven fully diminished seven of two. Mm. You know, so um, it's going to be a fully diminished seven chord. Wow. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Which is D sharp fully diminished seven. Yeah, yeah. And then from that fully dimi- seven of two, you would expect it you know, uh, to, to resolve uh, to two, right? And then uh, move to and be in D. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, but I'm not going to do that. Okay. I'm going to go D major, one. There's that four. And seven, fully diminished seven of two. Yeah. Becomes seven fully diminished seven of six. Uh huh. I'm gonna go seven, seven, seven of six to six, right? Uh, to, uh, let's see, to uh, two, mm-hmm. uh, to five, mm. one. And now we're in C sharp. C sharp, wow. So we went from D major, two sharps, to C sharp major, seven sharps. Seven, five so we sharps are five away. sharps away. That's a, that's a quite a jump. Yeah. And that secondary seventh chord is the pivot chord that is actually chromatic to both keys. Pretty cool, huh? But the main... you get the idea. You can reinterpret that seven of two as a seven of anything. And be even further away if you want to. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, main, the main point being that that one chord, that seven of, that seven chord of two yeah. is... Chromatic in both the first and the second key. Right. So chromatic pivot chord modulations. Before we leave the subject, one really uh, popular chromatic pivot chord is the Neapolitan six, mm-hmm. which you remember is a flat two in first inversion. Mm-hmm. So uh, if I was to go back into good old C, mm-hmm. and I'm, you know, and I try, I decide to do a, a Neapolitan six, which is a D flat, right? Um, I would go uh, to, yeah, right? Yeah. 
Neapolitan six? Yeah. Reinterpret this as five, and you end up in G flat. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. See that? A tritone away. Wow. We started on C, ended up in G flat. That's the halfway point yep. before you're out of the woods. Yeah. So this is C. Mm -hmm. C, uh, whatever, F, uh, Neapolitan six chord, which is going to be... Uh, mm-hmm. And, and then G flat. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? It happened pretty fast, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One episode. Reestablishing is important. When we were talking about um, modulating in the uh, Patreon episode, I think uh -huh. at the end you said, you know, I could probably get to any key that I need to. I could probably modulate to any key. I feel like I could. And I, and I thought to myself, I probably could too if given the time. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I couldn't just bust it out like you just did. That was pretty cool. Oh, that wasn't a whole lot of busting out. <laughs> but... Well, I tell you what, man. The um, Neapolitan chord is one that I'm not as stressed about when we get to that ear training episode because mm -hmm. I feel like I really know when I hear the Neapolitan. Yeah, they chord. sound weird. Yeah, they, they just they just kind of they they just kind of have a weird sort of uh, sound to them. Uh, we don't need to start digressing into. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, they just kind of have a weird sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and of course it would be a five six, right? In in the key of G flat, Neapolitan mm -hmm. six we interpreted as is five six, uh, and then just use five in first inversion. Uh, yeah, to right, yeah, to to go to five. So you know you would need to sort of reestablish that with some one five ones to be firmly in G flat after yeah. that. Yeah, you know? seal the deal. Yeah, but there you go. Nice. So pivot chord mod, uh, pivot uh, modulations, um, very much like what we've learned before. So why don't you give me two keys and see if I can get from one to the other? Just pick two two keys using pivot chord modulations. You, yeah, using chromatic pivot chord modulations. Okay, let's see. We like C. We like C major. I love it right now. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we like it more and more the more complicated these <laughs> topics get, and um, I think oh. B major is a good five sharps. B major to f five sharps. Okay. So Although, yeah. that's the five of... No, no. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. So let's let's see if I can get to B major. From C major. From C major. I wonder mm. what I could do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So, But we can do something like what you were talking about. Okay. We can go uh, C... And we're in good old C, one, five, one. And then um, I'm going to go to two. And then I'm going to uh, use uh, seven of five. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to use seven of five. So I'm going to use an F sharp fully diminished seven chord. Seven fully diminished seven to five, mm -hmm. but instead of uh, going to fi and C, mm -hmm. I'm going to use F sharp diminished. Uh, yeah, I better get my actual fully diminished in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm going to reinterpret that as seven of six. Yeah, can I do that? No, 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 no. Uh, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to reinterpret that as 7 of 4. And go from 7 of 5, reinterpret it as 7 of 4, which is going to put me in E major. And then from there, I am going to go to uh, 5. And then I'm going to go to B major. There. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So from C, one, and then uh, four, and then fully diminished seven to five. Uh -huh. I'm going to reinterpret it as fully diminished seven to four. I'm going to get a little better voice leading the time. And then seven four. to four in the new key. Yeah. Seven to four in the new key. And four to F sharp major. 
and then go to B. Wow, yeah. So yeah, so from C to B, that was that was pretty good. There's actually a much easier way to do that, but we're about to talk about it in a minute. So. Excited. We've been kind of, <laughs> yeah. te- we, in, our, in our heads, we're like, can we talk about this yet? We need, <laughs> yeah. we need to just go ahead and bring yet? this yeah. up at some point, shouldn't we? So there you go. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about it now, why let's. don't we? <laughs> I'm excited. This is the, so modulation by inharmonic reinterpretation of the German augmented six. Yeah. So blah bitty blah bitty blah bitty blah bitty blah. Sounds like right? some big words. Right. If you remember what smart it smart sounding stuff. Yes. Yeah, smart sounding stuff. But <laughs> actually fairly fairly uh fairly easy to get your head around as long as you uh practice it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we remember what a German augmented six is. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, this can get, uh, and we're going to spend the rest of this podcast sort of talking about these things, but just as, just as a quick overview, this can get involved. Yeah. Right. So for example, if you remember an augmented six chord, uh, let's be in good old C major. Love it. Because this gets a little complicated. The people's key. Yeah. The people's key. (laughs) And, you know, we are, you know, four, uh, and then... You remember an augment, a German augmented six chord mm. in the key of C major. Barely. Barely, right? Is gonna, well, it's gonna kinda, it's gonna kinda do that. Yeah. Right? All right, with that. That. It's going to be uh, scale degrees flat six, A flat, uh-huh. scale degree one, scale degree C, f- C scale degree flat three. Uh huh. And scale degree sharp four, F sharp. Uh huh. Right? That sounds uh, very familiar to me. It sounds very familiar because taken out of context, you know, this is also a five seven chord. Uh-huh. Right? So if you said A flat, C, E flat, F sharp, well, if you only called F sharp G flat, yeah, right, you have A flat, C, E flat, G flat. Also, AKA A flat seven. Dominant seven. Yeah, AKA five seven. Major minor seven. Yeah, uh, major minor seven, AKA five seven in the key of D flat. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So we have gone from C. Yeah. And this really, uh, really freaky. Uh, augmented six chord uh, into uh, reinterpreted as five seven and into D flat. Yeah, so, so the the sharp four. Yeah, the sharp four goes up. Uh, actually, resolves down. It goes down. Yeah, because it becomes the seven of the five seven, right? So we we're just calling mm-hmm. the 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 sharp four. In, in C, this was sharp four, this was F sharp. Mm-hmm. In D flat, this is scale degree four, G flat. Okay. Right? So we're just calling F sharp, G flat, in harmonic equivalent, right? Okay. Because uh, so, when I see a sharp, I think it's got to go up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when so I this see a flat, is, I think this it wants is, to go This is down. the fun of chromatic harmony, right? And reinterpretations, right? Yeah. You could, you could conceivably have, you know, a, a voice, G. Uh-huh. You know, and then... Um, G, you know, and then uh, German augmented six chord with uh, F sharp, mm-hmm. and then and then uh, into D flat with F natural. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you've gone. You know, <laughs> you've gone chromatically down. Just chromatic walk down, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty awesome, huh? I, yeah. ma- uh, I bet you can't wait to get those on some ear training exercises. They can. <laughs> but Master Fuchs. <laughs> yes. What if we want to go back the opposite direction? Is it as simple as, if you want to go down a half step, is it as simple as that? Can well, let's see. Um, let's be in the key of D. Yeah. Yeah. And we can be in the key of D. I use Master Fuchs as the general kind of uh, Jedi Master thing. Yeah, good plan. Even though Fuchs is more <laughs> counterpoint uh, based, but anyways. So we could be in the key of D. Uh-huh. We'll we'll do us a, a little two six chord. Mm-hmm. And we'll do us a five seven chord. Yeah. 
But if we look at that 5-7, A, C-sharp, E, and G. Mm -hmm. If we respell that G on top, if we think of it as F double sharp, mm -hmm. now we have flat six. Yeah. We have one. We have flat three. And we have sharp four all in the key of C sharp. Yes. Yeah. So. And so that's going to. Yeah. Yeah. So think about it. Uh, so uh, A, C sharp, E, G, five, seven in the key of D. Yeah. Right? Uh, in the key of C sharp, A is flat six. Uh-huh. Right? C sharp is one. Mm-hmm. E natural is three. And F double sharp will be sharp four. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Um, if you like to geek out on these things as I do. And me too. Uh -huh. And so we have gone from D to C sharp. Wow. You know, yeah. uh, that, so, and basically, if you're moving a whole step, I'm sorry, if you're moving a half step up or a half step down, that's a pretty much as distantly related. Even though the notes are so close Even though to the each notes other. are so close, that's as distantly related as you can possibly get. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, another quick example I want to see if we can try and pull off. Okay. From our friend Roy Francoli. Uh-huh. Using the same kind of key, using the same deal, the German mm. augmented sixth chord. Yes. Can we get to immediately, like a median key? So a minor or major third using the, the German augmented sixth chord. Right. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can do that. When would be an example like C major to E minor or to E yeah. major? Uh, it would be called making it a 5-7 of, right? Yeah. So... Uh, in C, yeah. uh, let's let's play a six chord, and then let's do our German augmented six. Uh, there you go. Mm -hmm. There's our six, or our German augmented six, either. Mm -hmm. And we interpret it as five seven off six in the new key. In the new key, so G sharp seven to C sharp. Yeah, to. Uh, to two, which is F sharp. Uh, in the new key. In the new key. Um, or F sharp minor. And then, yeah, B. And then E. And we got into E. So in, in, it's funny, instead of reinterpreting F sharp as G flat that time, and, and made it an A flat, C, E flat, G flat, Mm -hmm. I reinterpreted the other three notes mm. to make it uh, to make it G sharp, B sharp, D sharp, F sharp, a Gosh. G sharp seven instead of an A flat seven. That hurts in my head just thinking yeah. about what you had to do. Yeah, it hurt mine a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean that's a good example, right? That's... And we can go to E major or, or E minor. Yeah, I think. Can I try that one more time and, and get a good example Sh of sure, that please. chord progression? I need to hear this as many times as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so first key, right? We're in. Yeah. Yep. And C then, major. This is C major, and we're going to go do our augment to six. Mm -hmm. We interpret it as five seven of six to six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So six to two. Yeah. Two five. Two one. Mm. That was pretty convincing. Yeah. That was pretty smooth in my opinion. Yeah. Just that one chromatic E seventh chord and we and we moved all the way into Yeah, absolutely. The good old German augmented six chord reinterpreted as a five seven. As a chord. five seven. Or a Not, five seven of. Or a five seven of. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty uh, pretty pretty slick stuff, huh? Indeed. Yeah. Now Matt. Yes. This is kind of the point we talked about where mm -hmm. where the sky, where everything kind of becomes possible as yes. far as chromat modulating to different keys. This is absolutely. One of, this has been one of my go-to techniques. Yeah. Okay. The seven di diminished, fully diminished seven chord. The fully diminished seven chord in harmonic reinterpretation of the fully diminished seven chord. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. We so, talked about uh, a thing called it being a symmetrical chord. 
symmetry, right? Yeah. So yeah. it divides the chromatic scale, all 12 notes, into three equal parts, mm -hmm. right? And thusly, since it's a fully diminished chord, mm -hmm. any of these four notes can yes. be a leading tone yep. to whatever new key you want to be in. Right. See, so the thing is, a fully diminished seven chord is just minor thirds, right? Uh huh. So um, to just pull one out of my, you know what? So Keyboard? F, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An F sharp diminished seven chord uh, would be F sharp, a minor third up to A, mm -hmm. a minor third from A up to C, mm -hmm. and a minor third from C up to E flat, you could probably call it D sharp. And then a minor third from D sharp to to back up to the F sharp, right? So this is all minor thirds. There's yes. there's no fifth present here. No, no fifth. perfect fifth. No perfect fifth. Right there, uh, and so um, because of this, it doesn't really matter which of these I call the root. Mm -hmm. If yeah. I instead of starting on F sharp, if I instead started on the A, uh huh, you know, and I'll, I'll start on this A down here, uh -huh. and went a minor third up to C. And then a minor third up to E flat or D sharp. Sounds familiar. And then a minor third up to G flat or F sharp. A C D sharp F sharp. I have the same notes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I could and I could do that with all four of these. Uh huh. And you're just talking about the same chord. So because of that, when you're talking about this fully diminished seven chord resolving to the root of a chord that is a half step away. Yeah. It can be a half step away from any one of these notes. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you started off calling it. You know, you could start it off as calling it an F sharp, F, F sharp fully diminished that's supposed to lead to G, but you're just calling it that. Mm -hmm. It can lead to G. It can lead to, uh, it could lead a half step up from uh, A, which is B flat, mm -hmm. right? It can uh, lead a half step up from uh, C, which is D flat, and it can lead a half step up from uh, D sharp, which is E. Right. It can it can to any of those keys, to any yeah. of those chords, or to any of those keys. Right. Yeah. So there are three possible fully diminished seven chords. All, exactly. All together, right. Yeah. Um, and each of these chords holds the possibility of four different keys you can change to. Yeah. And three times four is twelve, and that's those are twelve keys. Oh, hey, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> In the major or minor modes. Yeah, man. Um, yeah. And I think, as, as to my understanding, this also includes all the seven of. Yeah. There's a possibilities. With yeah, yeah. Seven. So like we, we kind of did this a little bit when we were doing chromatic to chromatic. So seven to five, we're going to we're going to use one of our other notes in our diminished seven chord to make a seven to five in a different key. Seven of a different five, which is going to end up being the key that's a minor third away. Ah, think about that. Okay. Well, I no. Or it could be a minor third away or a diminished fifth away. I don't know if I could think about that because. <laughs> Explain okay. the process. All right. All right. All right. All right. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm taking excited. your word for it. Okay. I believe right. you. It could be a, mi a minor fifth away, or a, a minor third away, or a diminished fifth away, or a diminished seventh away. Now that now makes you sense. get it. Now I get it. <laughs> I saw the look of <laughs> comprehend. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyway. So would it be appropriate if I was to challenge you, Matt? So let's do that. Uh, what key do we want to be in? Oh, we've done a lot of C, haven't we? Yep. How about uh, let's uh, let's do something like a. Uh, Let's do like a E flat. Oh, frick, God. man. Okay, no, no let's do, do that. that. All right, E flat. We are in the key of E flat. Mm. Not the bass player's key. <laughs> Not the bass player's key. So we're in E flat. And I'm going to try to make a passing attempt at some kind of chord progression here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go from uh, E flat to A flat, and then from there I'm going to go to seven, fully diminished seven of five, right? So I'm going to go... Five in the first key? In the first key, yeah. Okay. So this is going to be a, let's see, five is B flat, so this is, I'm going to go to a, um, a, the a major, A diminished, A fully diminished seven chord. Okay. Yep, so... Uh, and then I'm going to go. So there's my seven, seven to five. Uh huh. Right. Seven to five in the first right. key. It looks like it. Right. So to do to do that one more time, uh, just 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 have everybody on the same page. Please. So. Um, there's one. I'm gonna go. One. Four. four. 
chord. Notice I'm not having to move my bass. This E flat is diatonic to all these chords. Nice. Uh, or is or is a chord tone in all these chords. So E flat. One. Four six four. Uh huh. Mm. And then uh, and then my A diminished seven of five. Mm -hmm. And now what do we want to go to? We want to go to the five of the new key. We want to go to a five of the new key. So uh, we don't need to resolve it back to B flat because so, that's the key we were in. Right. Uh, we could pick any of those chords and make it a Let's see if we can go to, yeah, we can pick any of these notes. Let's pick the, the uh, G flat uh -huh. you know, or the F sharp, whatever. Uh huh. And make this seven of five in the new key, which means seven moving to G major. Uh. Yeah. To C. C. Wow. And we, we managed to get a minor third down. Mm -hmm. We managed to get from E flat to C. Hmm. That's a, that's a distantly related key. Yeah. Uh, yeah, three flats away. Can we Just, hear that one more time? Yeah, we can hear that one more time. Let's see. E, f e flat. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, actually, I was in this finger position. My bad. All right. So, so E flat. One. One, six, four. Yeah. Four. Uh, seven of five. Fully diminished seven, five. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pivot chord. And then... Uh, To new seven of five, to new five, to new one. Yes. Uh, yeah. We could similarly have gone um, four, and then our five seven chord, mm. and then this time let's uh, be five seven uh, of C sharp mm. and go to G sharp minor. Um, or F sharp minor. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still a pretty distantly related key, isn't it? E flat to F sharp. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, it's actually yeah. still a mediant key, right? F still sharp, a G flat. And how did you know when I said that? How did you know it was going to be a, a mediant away, a minor third away? Because the diminished sevens are all minor thirds. Uh huh. So you're going to resolve up to uh, something that's a minor third if you choose a different one. Okay. Right? Nice. Uh, minor third up or minor third down or diminished fifth. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't manage to figure that one out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, so you know, if the fives are a minor third's way, then the keys are going to be a minor third away. Okay. So you're going to be, if they're going to be seven to five in both keys, you're either going to be Modulating a minor third up or a minor third down or a diminished fifth up. Mm, wow. Or down. Diminished fifth would be up or down, whichever. So that's a good little tidbit. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, I like it when my brain works fast like that because people are like, whoa, wait, uh, what? I don't. S so often my brain works very, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back and rewind that part. <laughs> Uh, so, so there you go. And not only modulations, but in, in constructing secondary seven chords, when you have this fully diminished seven chord, it is a real neat trick and something to learn that you can resolve to any root that is a half step above any of those four notes. Yeah, yeah, which is, yeah. again, what makes it so great to me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know, it wouldn't necessarily end up a, a minor third away if we had said seven of five or interpreted as a seven of two or something. Mm. You know, we could have gotten... A lot further away than we, we thought. Right? Yeah. The takeaway from all of this is you can get from any key to any key. It just depends on how creatively you're trying to get there. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. And how much time you have to do and it. How much time you have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> how many brain cells you have. Yes. So shall we recap? I think we should. Okay. So this whole episode has been about modulating to distantly related keys. Mm -hmm. And the way we modulate to distantly related keys is basically through chromaticism. Distantly related being? More than two accidentals away. Right. So the way we do this is through chromaticism. Ah. You, you need some kind of chromaticism to do this. You know? Notes that are foreign to the key. Yeah. Di uh, diatonic modulation is only going to get you one or two, maybe three accidentals away. Yeah. Um, when you bring in chromatic chords, though, you can do things like with chromatic pivot chords. Yes. Uh, you can use chromatic pivot chords. Uh, you can use 
inharmonic reinterpretation of the augmented six mm-hmm. or inharmonic reinterpretation of the fully diminished seven uh-huh. and use these to get to keys that are crazy far away from the key you started in. Uh, so pivot chord modulations, uh-huh. diatonic to chromatic, yes. a chord that is diatonic in the first key, like a four, but chromatic to the second, like a borrowed flat six. Uh-huh. We yeah. did that. Right. Um, chromatic to diatonic. A chord that is chromatic in the first key and diatonic in the second. Like Neapolitan six, chromatic chord in the first key, mm-hmm. reinterpreted as five six, diatonic to the second. Nice. And you end a tritone away. Uh-huh. Right? See, that's uh, that's one way to get to that flat fifth modulation, the tritone modulation. Right, right, yeah. Or chromatic to chromatic. Mm-hmm. Something mm-hmm. that is chromatic in both. Uh, German augmented six in the first key that is a five six of five in the second key. Or a uh, fully diminished seven of two that is fully diminished seven of six or whatever. Mentally, I had the biggest problem with that at first, but now yeah. I think I'm getting it. I think I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, those are chromatic pivot chords. In harmonic reinterpretation of the German augmented six chord, we have discovered that the German augmented six chord is really a five seven. Pretty cool. Chord. Yeah. So like if you take the German augmented six just in C, for example, uh, A flat, C, E flat, and F sharp, if you merely call F sharp G flat, mm-hmm. then you have A flat, C, E flat, G flat. That's an A flat seven chord that you can reinterpret as five seven and move to D flat. Yes. Yeah. D flat being quite far away from the original key. C. Yeah. A half step up. Yeah. That's not, yeah. And you can also go backwards. You could take any five seven chord reinterpreted as a German augmented six by just calling the, the sharp four different, calling it by a synharmonic equivalent, mm-hmm. and end up with a German augmented six, which you can then use to go backwards and go a half step down. It would seem as if with all of these modulatory techniques, I'm finding you can kind of go back reverse engineer it yeah, the you way can, you yeah, came totally. in. Yeah, totally. You can go either way. It's a two-way street. Yeah. All of them, yeah. All of them. Yeah. And we also noticed that you could modulate back and forth, up and down between medians. Mm. Yeah, uh, using this by by uh, reinterpreting not the sharp four, but all three notes, uh, all three other notes, which hurts my head. Yeah, uh, and then there is the mod- uh, the reinterpretation of the fully diminished seven chord. Yes, because the fully diminished seven chord is all minor thirds. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really doesn't matter which note you call the root. Yeah, you know, uh, th- you can just you know they're 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 all the same chord no matter which one you start on. Uh-huh. Any one of them could be the root, so you don't have to modulate a half step away from what you originally thought was the root. You can mod you can uh, resolve. You don't have to resolve away from what you originally thought was the res- root. You can resolve a half step up from any of those four notes. Yes, and with all these four notes, all of these four notes together, there's not a single perfect fifth. Sonority. Exactly. Yeah. So that's where the ambiguousness comes in of this chord. Right. We can kind of yeah. have freedom to say, well, this is yeah. it's this or this reinterpretation. Yeah. Big takeaway is you could really get from any key to any key if you were willing to to work at it and and willing to use your chromaticism enough. Now that we are done with this episode, yes, man, go out there and do some cool stuff. Go out there and do some cool stuff. This is actually, like I said uh, before, this is actually what eventually leads to the breakdown of the idea of key. Yeah. yeah, because you see how, you know, if we get too much more complicated than this, the idea that we're in a key is just going to start getting in the way, mm-hmm. right? We've already got five of fives and seven of fives and Neapolitan sixes and augmented sixes, and now we can use those to get blah, blah, blah. Yeah, <laughs> you see how the idea of key is just starting to get into the way that we're starting to get to this point where we're just writing chords. Yeah, we've kind of explained our way around just about every combination of these notes. Yeah, and in classical music, towards the start of the 20th century, this kind of, the idea of key breaks down altogether. But that's a big spoiler, big foreshadowing. We'll get to that one day. For now, we can get to, we can modulate to pretty much any key we want if we just are creative enough. But if you were to recommend a good late Romantic era composer who does some of this, do you you have any uh, examples? Or uh, for classic uh, music? Richard Strauss. Oh, okay. okay. Not Johann Strauss, but Richard. Richard, he did the... Yeah. He did Salome. Okay, This okay. is a big thing. And he, uh, Johann Strauss did Blue Danube and all that stuff. Right. Richard Strauss is straddling the 20th century, and he's a great idea of how confusing this has gotten. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Wagner is a great example of how confusing it has gotten. Mm-hmm. Um 
I bet he used the German augmented six chord a lot. I, I, I bet he did. I bet he did. Yeah, I bet he German. did. Um, uh. Anybody from the 1850s on, so, you know, um, uh, Schumann, certainly, uh, Puccini. Ah, uh, uh, Italian. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, certainly. Um, hmm, let's see. Uh, some of the Schubert art songs get pretty get pretty wacky. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also... Um, French Impressionist? Impressionist? Impression, uh, that word I can't say? Uh, Sh- uh, Schubert? No, he was a German. No, I'm just asking if there was other... Oh, the French Impressionists, they, they, they're they off into when tonality is gone. Okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, listen, uh, listen to Schubert, listen to Chopin, his waltzes, you know, and things. Hmm. Uh, they, they can, they can modulate pretty, uh, pretty effectively. Nice. Yeah. Any of, any of those romantic guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's romantic. List, Franz List, definitely listen to List. You know, he does up. these kind of things, yeah. Him and Chopin, if you can keep up. Yeah, I go. Yeah, go back to back. Listen to Chopin or Liszt, and then go back and listen to a Haydn piano sonata or a hmm. Mozart, and listen to the difference this level of chromaticism makes in what's uh, going on. Good call, man. You know, absolutely. Yeah. All right, that's what I got. That's plenty. <laughs> this is a great episode. Now I'm going to go eat some barbecue. I don't know about you. Get you some barbecue, man. <laughs> you deserve it. Well deserved. All right, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. If you wish to support us financially, look us up at patreon.com slash musicstudent101. If you just want to help out, tell a friend about us. If you have questions or comments, send them to info at musicstudent101.com.